this is lecture 32. So we, in the last lecture, we saw an normalization lemma. K field are finitely generated K algebra or in other words finite type K algebra then then there exist uh, algebraically independent Z1 through Zd inside R such that R is finite over the subalgebra K Z1 through Zd. So this is a polynomial ring or isomorphic to a polynomial ring and R over this is finite. So we can go back to one of the earlier examples that we, we had this xy. Okay. So we can think of the subalgebra generated by x plus y. This was what was where we had mapped kt to kt to this with t mapping to the mapping to x plus y and this uh, is a, for example an, uh, this is an example of uh, net normalization okay uh, okay so now we will prove net normalization lemma in a little while but before that we want to prove uh, the nullstellen satz okay so first we'll start with a new a statement okay we'll call it Nullstellensatz version 3 or version 4 we started with first version which said uh, something about v of i being empty the second version was about maximal ideals third version was what we called classical Nullstellensatz or Hilbert's Nullstellensatz was about the radical of the ideal and now we are in version 4 okay let K be a field and F an extension field of K K that is finitely generated as a K algebra. Okay. Remember K to F, K, K, K to F is a ring homomorphism and here we are saying it is finitely generated as an algebra. Okay. Then F is a finite extension field of K that is it is a finite extension okay so it is not at all clear what this has to do with nullstellensatz and why it's even called a version of nullstellensatz so which we will prove now okay so we will prove uh, so remember version 2 of nullstellensatz which we okay was that k algebraically closed Okay, M, uh, maximal ideal of, of R adjoint, uh, sorry, K adjoint X1 through Xn. Then there exists some A inside Kn such that uh, M is X1 minus A1 through Xn minus An. This is version 2. So now we will prove version 2 from version 4. Nullstellensatz version 2 from using uh, Nullstellensatz version 4. Okay, so this is really, uh, I mean, yeah, uh, Nullstellensatz was stated as a theorem about zeros of, polynom of polynomials. This is not, this doesn't look at all, anything at all like that, but we would still call it a version of the Nullstellensatz. Uh, so let's we are in this setup okay. Okay. so let 
f be r mod m. Uh, so let r be the polynomial ring. So k is algebraically closed. Uh, r is k x1 through xn okay and m is a maximal ideal of r uh, then r mod m is a field finitely generated as a k algebra because r is finitely generated as a k algebra any quotient is also finitely generated uh, as a k algebra okay. which uh, now implies this is the nuschel and zatz version 4 nuschel and zatz version 4 implies that r mod m is a finite uh, extension of oh. yeah. remember k is algebraically closed yes uh, finite extension of k okay so now k is algebraically closed which now means that r mod m uh, is actually isomorphic to k okay so now let's try to uh, look at this. So, there is k here, then there is r here, then there is r mod m which is also isomorphic to k. Okay. Now, an element alpha inside k goes to the constant polynomial alpha and goes to alpha itself here because this is just eval this is just uh, going modulo some maximal ideal. Okay. So, alpha so residue class is just alpha itself. On the other hand, if you xi here, will go to some alpha i for any i. Okay. So, in other words, in this map, so this now implies that, uh, sorry, uh, alpha i is the image of xi under this map. So, under this map, then we see that xi minus alpha i. So, alpha i because it came from k, alpha i because it came from k went to alpha i directly and xi also went to alpha i. So, this is inside m because that is the kernel of this map. This is true for all i. So, remember what this is the image, this is the definition of image of xi in R mod m. It gives some element inside R mod M, call it alpha i. Okay, so, this is inside here. So, therefore, x1 minus alpha 1 through xn minus alpha n is equal to m because this is a sub ideal of this, but both are maximal. This is a maximal ideal for evaluation. This is given to be a maximal ideal. So, therefore, there is equality here. So, maximal ideal is this form. So, this is the proof of version 2 of the uh, of uh, 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 assuming version 4. Okay. So, now we will prove version 4 of Nullstellensatz assuming noise normalization and then in the next lecture we will prove noise normalization it is a little technical uh, argument playing with polynomials, but uh, we will give a quick argument for some special case in this lecture itself. Okay, so, this proves, uh, 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 so we, we now need to prove uh, version 4 of Nullstell and Zatz assu uh, assuming Nathan normalization lemma. Okay, so, version 4, proof of version 4. Uh, of Nullstell and Zatz. From Noether normalization lemma. Okay. 
So what is the version 4 of the statement was a finite type, uh, a field extension that is finite type is finite. Okay. This is what uh, we have and okay. So let f be a field extension of f uh, of k. Uh, finite type k algebra. Okay. So then by Noether normalization, Noether normalization, uh, there exist z1 through zd inside uh, inside f such that f is finite over uh, k adjoint z1 through z d. Okay. But what can d be? Well, the claim is that d has to be 0. d must be equal to 0. Okay. Why? Okay. If d is positive, then Z1 inverse is inside F, but it is not inside K adjoint Z1 to Zd. That is because uh, uh, this is a polynomial ring. Okay? It, it does not contain inverses of the variables. So it, it will not be inside here, okay? but it is inside F because F is a field. I mean Z1 is an element of F, so it is inverses is inside uh, and moreover z1 is not integral over k z1 inverse is not integral over k z1 through zd okay so it goes back to the argument as we did for integers and rationals Okay, so suppose it is so, so uh, uh, okay. suppose it is the by way of contradiction, suppose it is, then we would get something of the form 1 over z1 to the n plus some uh, a1 1 over z1 to the n minus 1 and so on a n equals 0 uh, with a i inside the subring. Okay. Clear denominators, we would get so we would get one plus some a one z one plus a two z z1 square up to some a n z1 n equals 0. Okay. But think about it this way, think about it, uh, this is a polynomial, so now this, this happens inside the polynomial ring in, in k z1 through zd. Okay. That is not possible because all these terms have no constant term, here there is a 1 or said in other words, the if these are algebraically independent, there cannot be such a relation. Okay? So this therefore d equals 0. Okay? And therefore it says that f is, okay? so therefore f is a finite module, a finitely generated module. over k, which is what we wanted to prove. That is, these are field extensions and that extension degree is finite. Okay. So the, therefore, we are now left to prove noise normalization lemma. We would uh, uh, give the proof in the next lecture. But uh, 
uh, before uh, we'll give the uh, full proof uh, whatever we stated in the next lecture. Uh, however, uh, let's discuss a proof which will work in for infinite much simpler proof which works in for infinite fields uh, now, which can also be used at least for fields that are sufficiently large enough can also be used as an uh, as an idea uh, as a as a trick to construct these things uh, in a uh, in a in a computer. So we'll do that in the next lecture. But let's just quick give a quick uh, a proof of this in the infinite field case now. Okay, so proof of the net normalization lemma. Okay. Assuming k is infinite. Okay. So for example, any field of characteristic 0 or any algebraically closed field, all of them is fine. So write R as k adjoint some y1 through y, yn because it is finitely uh, generated and map uh, a polynomial ring to this. Surjectively. Okay. If this is injective, then there is nothing to uh, prove because then it is already a polynomial ring. Okay. If this map is injective, then R itself is a polynomial ring okay. and then we are done okay. because all that we wanted to prove where R is, a, is finite over a subalgebra which is a polynomial ring. So it is just even identity map. Okay. Otherwise, okay. some polynomial F, so there exists some non zero polynomial F of y1 through yn in its kernel. Okay. So let n be the total degree, uh, not individual variable y s degree, but the degree of the degree of f, the total degree of f. Okay. Now we do a change of coordinates. We change do a change of coordinates as y i star is y i minus alpha i y n and so this is for 1 less than or equal to i less than or equal to n minus 1 and alpha i to be determined. Okay. If you do this then uh, okay. So now we can rewrite f of y1 through yn as some f tilde of y1 star through yn minus 1 star yn. If you choose, in fact, for almost all choices of these alpha i, f tilde the new polynomial f1 star uh, y1 star to yn minus 1 star yn okay, is of the form uh, sorry I didn't okay, so uh, is of the form so notice that the change of coordinates gives an automorphism of the polynomial ring of this polynomial this polynomial ring Okay, so it is just that we are we are subjecting some other polynomial ring onto R. Okay, uh, so it doesn't. Okay, so we can still study of the form. Uh, we can still study a non-zero element in the kernel. Y n to the n. 
so there might be there will be some coefficient which depends on the alphas so this is a non zero coefficient from k okay. then here onwards it would involve uh, some coefficients from coefficients from k adjoint the fewer variables sorry y n minus 1 star and then y n to the n minus 1 and so on lower degree terms. Okay. In other words in these new variables we get that so this is a uh, this is a uh, this is a non-zero coefficient from k so it is invertible so without loss of generality we, we can relabel things and assume that f is uh, uh, f is monic or f tilde is monic in y okay, with coefficients coming from the earlier variables. So therefore uh, by transitivity of finite morphisms therefore it is enough to show that uh, the polynomial uh, the Uh, the subalgebra generated by n minus 1 elements okay. so they, so this one's image inside r okay. so this one's image inside r so if you had yn also and then took its image it would be all of r but we, be, by because of this uh, we don't need to worry about all of r just we can just remove that yn so just look at the subalgebra that this one generates inside R. It's enough to show that this uh, the image of this thing is fine, uh, satisfies the the uh, uh, the lemma, the the, the uh, theorem, the uh, uh, the uh, theorem, the Nathan normalization lemma, and now we uh, we. Can proceed by induction. Okay. Okay, so then finish by induction. Okay. Because it will not it cannot come down all the way up. I mean it might come down all the way up to zero, but at some point it has to stop. Okay. So this is the uh, uh, end of this. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, the proof. This is a proof in the special case of where the field is infinite, and we would. Uh, so, what does it actually uh, 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 tell us? I mean, concretely for computations. Okay. So, suppose we had some k. Uh, so, let's say k is infinite. So, we are assuming k infinite. Okay. R we can think of as some k adjoint some y1 through yn modulo some ideal i okay, finite type. So what it says is there exists general linear forms okay, some d of them which what is the value of d that we have not yet determined it will take us a while for us to understand what the d is okay. So these forms will look like uh, well I should, maybe I should not call them because they are images of uh, in this thing uh, general linear uh, uh, linear elements of r okay of the form. So these are the z1 through zd, some summation alpha ij yj, j goes from 1 through n, i goes from 1 through d and d will be determined later. I mean that there is a d with this property is part of the, the lemma. How the this current proof tells us that if you take some generic values for alpha uh, uh, alpha ij and construct these things. So let us call this thing zi. Okay. Okay. 
So this uh, we'll just take them as elements of R. Or in other words, we'll construct them in the polynomial ring and then look at their residue classes in R. Then, sorry, so there exists such that. Okay. The subalgebra generated by the polynomial ring and R is finite over it. Finite uh, as a morphism, so uh, of rings. Okay, so this is the uh, uh, this is what uh, thing. So we can actually do these things with linear combinations. This is what uh, not every choice of alpha ij will work, but because k is infinite, we can they, there is enough to room to, uh, enough room to choose them randomly, and that would work. That is what the the and uh, this may be useful in while trying to compute uh, some things. Okay, uh, so uh, and we'll see some examples a little later. Okay. So now, uh, uh, so in the next lecture, so this is the end of this lecture. Uh, in the next lecture, we will prove Newton normalization lemma in the generality. So that will finish the proof of Nullstell and Zatz also. Okay, so this is, and then we will study more about finite integral morphisms, integral extensions. Uh, and after we study that a little bit, then we can come back to computational aspects or at least trying to see some examples, pictures, etc. Okay.